A couple of months ago, I made a video on how to add custom supports in the Cura Slicer to your 3D printed models. In that video, I explained that Cura does a really good job of auto-generating supports, but every once in a while, it makes sense to add a custom support when you just need supports in one or two different places and Cura is trying to place supports everywhere. Well, I would say without a doubt, one of the most commented things in that video was tree supports. Well, what about tree supports? Can you use tree supports? Make a video on tree supports. So that is exactly what we're gonna do in today's video. So in today's video, we are gonna take a look at tree supports in Cura. We're gonna talk about what they are, how to activate them, and we're gonna go over two instances of where it makes sense to use tree supports and another instance where it doesn't make sense to use tree supports. I hope you guys are excited, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Since we're talking about tree supports, I'm going to assume you at least have a general understanding of supports with FDM or extrusion based 3D printing. Essentially, you've got your model and when you're printing any of the pieces that help to support that model are considered your support model or your support structure. This can be on single extrusion machines, the exact same material as your primary part or on dual extrusion, you can use a water soluble support material, which we recently did in a video review. Since extrusion based 3D printing works by laying down layer by layer, building upon the previous layer, there are certain limitations. So things that are over a certain steep angle, things that are bridged or things that are printed in the air can't be done without some kind of a support structure underneath that holding it in place until the print's complete. Otherwise it would just print and the filament would ooze down onto the bed of your printer and it would not look great. So in these instances, supports are a requirement to actually complete your part successfully. Now that we've gone over regular supports, what are tree supports? Well, tree supports serve the exact same purpose as a traditional support. The goal of them is to support your primary model to ensure that it prints successfully. The main difference is that they take on a completely different form, almost looking like trees or a root structure. Compared to traditional supports, tree supports are much newer and they were not around when I was first getting into 3D printing six years ago. They weren't even really around four years ago or even much three years ago. They've really gained popularity in the last couple of years and primarily gained popularity through resin-based 3D printers. And resin-based 3D printers, there's a lot less movement going on with the bed just going up and down and the model rising up out of the bed. So tree supports work incredibly well to support your model. Well, with that popularity, they have made their way over to FDM 3D printers, and they have been around for quite a while also with FDM 3D printers. And even in Cura, under the experimental section, you can activate them and you could have played around with them for a really long time. Well, recently in Cura 4.7, they went ahead and decided to remove them from experimental and put them into just the regular support section of Cura. So that way you can use them and they're no longer deemed as experimental. So we've gone over tree supports a little bit, but why? What is the benefit of tree supports? Well, it's really twofold. The first reason is to save material and cut down on print time. The way they work, you are often able to use less support material to support your model, which is great because you save cost and waste from not having to get rid of additional material and less filament being printed also means that it will cut down on your print times. The other goal of it is to make it where removing that support material is easier to do because with support material, even with traditional supports, if you've got them dialed in, you can have it where the model's done and you can pull those supports off quite easily. However, there are a lot of times where those support materials will actually bond with your primary part and you'll have to cut them off, sand them off, dremel them off in extreme instances. And so true supports are, their goal is to help aid in making that not such a difficult process, the removal. Using tree supports in Cura is incredibly easy to do. If they aren't showing up by default in Cura 4.7, all you need to do is hover your mouse over the support title in the menu on the right hand side. Doing so will display a small gear icon that when clicked on will take you to the support settings Cura offers that you can click on to activate and add them to this menu. As a minimum, you'll want to activate Cura support structures, but if you want to control some of the parameters of the tree supports, I also re recommend enabling the branch angle, distance, diameter, diameter angle, along with the collision resolution. Now that those have been added, when we click on generate support, we can choose tree from the support structure dropdown menu. In most instances, when you use tree supports, you may not need to fine tune the settings, but in case you want to, let's quickly run through what the different tree settings will do. So the first setting is the support branch angle. This is the angle the tree supports can be at. A lower angle will make them more vertical, which means that they'll be a bit more secure, and a higher angle will give them additional reach, but may compromise on their overall strength. Next, we have support branch distance. 
Similar to the standard support model distance, this determines how close the tips of those branches can be to your actual model. A large number will ensure that the branches are further away from your model, while a smaller number will bring the branches closer. This is really a balancing act as too close can make the branches combine with your model and too far may not provide the needed support. I found that the default setting seems to be working very well. After that, we have this support branch diameter. This will determine how thin the branches can be at their thinnest point. A smaller number means that it may use less material, but if your branches are so thin that they fall over on themselves or do not support the model, then of course that's no good. The branch diameter angle will allow you to decide as the branches change in their diameter what angle they will be formed in. It is recommended to have at least a slight angle for added stability of the tree supports. Then the last setting on this is collision resolution. It's there to ensure that the tree supports don't actually come in contact and clash with your primary model when they're being generated. The finer you go with this number also will make it take longer for the slicer to actually process your sliced file. For the sake of the examples, we're gonna stick with the default tree settings that Kira has because with a lot of Kira settings at this point, I feel like the defaults are pretty damn good. So the first model we're gonna take a look at is a bust of Joker that was modeled by Wexter, a super talented 3D modeler that I have printed out his stuff plenty of times in the past. I'll place links down below to where you can find this model and many more of his models. Well, the Joker bust is modeled in a way where it really doesn't need much support material at all. The primary place it needs support material is underneath Joker's chin. Now in Cura, I went ahead and used the default support settings, not the custom and not the tree supports, and it placed way too many supports. Even by lowering the angle that it applied those supports, I really wasn't happy with the results I was getting. For this Joker bust, it's really easy to use the method that I showed you in my previous video for creating custom supports in Cura. All you need to do is click on create custom support, click underneath his chin to generate a box and then scale that so that way it covers the area it needs to be covered and you are good to slice and print. However, I wanted to see what tree supports would do in this scenario. I went ahead and sliced the tree supports by default in Cura and they were all over the model. It wanted to support his chin, it wanted to support little strands of his hair, even some portions of his ear and the flower on his chest, which really were not needed. So then I decided I'm gonna go ahead and use, for fun, support blockers and block all of the areas around him that I don't want supports so that way the tree supports can only generate to his chin which I went ahead and did, and in the slicing software, it looked like it was pretty narrow, but it still looked pretty good, and I wanted to see how it would turn out. Well, sort of as I predicted, when it was printing the Joker model, the first one where I used the custom support that I put underneath his chin, it did a fantastic job. It supported it just like I wanted, it held in place, and when I removed it, I was left with a fantastic looking model. Granted, it was a little bit difficult to remove, I probably should have gapped out things a little bit more, but nevertheless, it did a great job. Now, tree supports, on the other hand, for this model didn't really go as planned. I did see in the slicer that it looked like it was a very thin tree support and I wasn't sure how it was gonna be able to support itself. And I saw very early on in the print that the tree support was kind of moving around, which is not a good sign for a structure that's supposed to support your primary model. And as it got further and further up, it just got worse and worse. And what ended up happening is, as the chin began to print on top of the tree support, the tree support shifted, which basically gave the Joker like a broken chin and when removing, his chin just completely fell off. So aside from him having a nub chin, everything else turned out fine, but clearly in this instance, it makes more sense to just throw a support block underneath his chin and just avoid tree supports and avoid these standard supports altogether. For the second model, I found an adorable model of Charmander over on Thingiverse that was modeled by Patrick Fan Art. I will place links to that as well in the description. This model needed quite a bit more support than Joker, so I figured it would be a great example to show how tree supports can be very useful. This model needed supports underneath both arms, the chin, mouth area, and even Charmander's tail. With tree supports, the slice model took six hours and used 54 grams of filament. I then sliced this exact same model using traditional supports and the print went from six hours to six hours and 45 minutes, and the filament went from 54 grams to 58 grams. The filament savings on this one model may not be huge, but let's say you had to print 100 of this model, it can really add up quickly. The print time difference really surprised me at nearly 12% increase using traditional supports over tree supports. Not only do the tree supports print very well and support what they needed to, they were also much easier to remove than the traditional support structure. There is a time and place to use standard supports, custom support blocks, and tree supports. Tree supports might not be the answer to all of your support needs, but as we've covered in this video, there is a time and place where they can be incredibly useful. I think that at least knowing that you have those at your will or in your toolbox for your 3D printing slicing is incredibly valuable and certainly something that you should at least consider for certain geometries or certain complex models. 
Let me know in the comments down below if tree supports are something that you've previously used or if after watching this video you try out tree supports, what your experience is like, and maybe if you've learned something along the way. And if you've been using tree supports for a while and you think there's something valuable that other people should know about using them, maybe instances where it works really well and other instances where you feel like it doesn't work very well, also please let us know in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something along the way. If you have any questions about tree supports I didn't answer, please let me know also in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single Saturday, so there is always fresh content coming your way. Huge thank you to all of you guys. I've gotten a tremendous amount of support and the channel is growing insanely. You guys are absolutely awesome. If you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description to my Patreon where there are some really cool rewards. Huge thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters for allowing me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys. On that note, I hope you guys are all doing fantastic and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. This has been Daniel from ModBot and I'm out. Peace guys.